Hey, what's up guys? Today we're taking a look at a whole new way that you can use your 3D printer. Uh, we're going to be using this HueForge software and instead of making full 3D objects, you can make beautiful 2D or 2.5D artwork like this or like this or like this. These were really cool. It's fun to make and they look really good when they're done. So let's roll the intro and then we'll get started in the software. Okay, so let's take a look at this awesome software, HueForge. Uh, I want to say a big thanks to them for sending me the uh, personal license of it just so that I can you know, try it out and then show you guys a little bit about how it works. I actually got to meet Steve from Hue Forge at the East Coast Rep Rap Festival, and he was a pretty cool guy, and I got to see uh, all of the amazing works that they were showing off there. I'm still not an expert, but I'll show you a little bit of how it works. Uh, so, uh, just take a look around. Um, so, up here we've got some settings. Uh, you know, so this is uh, lighting settings for uh, if you're going to make a lithograph, uh, which I haven't actually done yet. Uh, I just make the, uh, the what they call painted images. Um, up here we have uh, yep, some more settings. Uh, things like the uh, layer height, which surprised me at first. The default is 0 0.08 layer height. I didn't even know you could go that low with a regular 3D printer. Apparently, a lot of people even do 0 0.04. And so I'm going to be trying that out later. I haven't actually tried going that low yet. Uh, so there we go. Um, uh, here is, of course, where your image will go. Uh, over here is a list of all the different filaments that you have. And there are already a whole lot of them down here that are pre-installed or pre-set up. And uh, so if you have any of these, you can just check the box to say, I own this one, and it will appear up top. Uh, these are ones that I own, and uh, I have a lot more, but these are just the ones that I have added right now. Uh, down here, this is the where the different filaments go and the level of them. Uh, we'll get more into that later. Then over here, we have some uh, model geometry. This is about the model that you'll actually be printing. Uh, it should be noted that this uh, software is not a slicer. It will just prepare the files for you to load into your normal 3D printing slicer. So uh, let's uh, open an image. So to start off with, I've got this uh, cool uh, Scarlet Witch image that I found online. And we drag it in, you'll see we get the original image on the right. And on the left is the model that we're going to be working on. And you can see if you rotate this, it is an actual 3D model. And we can actually see the wireframe we zoom in and close enough you can see the wireframe there so let's uncheck the wireframe and then we'll reset the view so uh, this is what we're, what we're gonna be working on and you can see it is black and white so all you're working with is the luminance values of this and we can see you can switch this to black and white uh, luminance and so you'll see it's just a grayscale and we switch that back okay and so what we do is down here we have uh, all these uh, filament layers that we're going to put in and you can see it starts with these default black and gray and white colors but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the filaments that I have and fill in these. And uh, the black is already here. I'm just going to leave whatever this black is because I didn't add a black in there myself. Okay, and so 
where we're generally going is from dark to light and they don't have to be in any specific order you have a, <clears throat> a dark one here and then a light one and then a medium one it doesn't really matter so uh, I'm gonna start with a darker one this is a uh, brown and I'm just gonna drag it down from the little swatch there down to the second slider and you can immediately see we get a lot of brown in there and you can slide it up and down to get more or less and I'm gonna bring that black down actually I only really need like maybe two layers of it and I can bring the brown down some more and then let's uh, try the next maybe the red yeah, we'll put that in this slider, and then we can bring that down. And that's getting closer already. And so looking in here, I see some brown, I see some red, and I kind of feel like there's a little pink maybe, maybe a little bit of orange. So let's add some orange. Here's my... Uh, inland orange and by the way you can add these yourself uh, just come down here and click uh, new filament uh, pick whatever color it is click OK and then you just fill in it's a PLA uh, fill in the brand uh, fill in the color name and then we'll fill in the the TD value that's the transmission distance and that's basically how many layers you can stack and still see through see the color that's underneath and it's different for all different filaments so I've made up uh, these little cards uh, that you can print uh, with the numbers on them and it'll just print different uh, different layers so uh, this one here is up to 10 layers and so you can just look at the, what number it is to see what the transmission distance is. Uh, now there is a more official way of doing this with the, uh, it has a little uh, LEDs inside a little box and you can put your filament in there and it'll tell you, you know, what the uh, TD is. But, uh, you know, I just came up with this before that was introduced and I think my method works okay as well. It's not maybe not quite as precise, but it works. Okay, so back to what we were doing. We'll just cancel that. Uh, so I was going to add some orange. So I'll drag my inland orange down here. And that is very bright. Let's bring that down. Okay. And maybe some pink. Pop that in there. And yeah, well, we're just going to have to play with these sliders until we get it right. Uh, then I don't have a white that I added in here, so I'm just going to scroll down. And this uh, drop down box here, you can sort these. So this is sorting by brand right now. I'm going to sort it by color. And then now here's some whites right here on top. So for the, just for the moment, I'm just going to grab one of these whites and just drop it in the last slot here. And we'll pull that one up. And so, you know, you can play with these sliders, give it more or less until you get it just the way you want. So we're going to need more red. And as you can see, when you have two that are at the same level, they'll turn red under here. Uh, that's indicating that you can't have two at the same layer. So you're going to have to move one of them up or down. Okay, and so this will take uh, quite a bit of fiddling and I've already got a project that I made that's pretty close. Let's load that up.
Okay, so here is the one that I have loaded up. And I think it's maybe not 100% perfect, but uh, it's pretty close. And I think this would do a good job of uh, printing. So uh, this one is where I, I experimented. I did set the layer height to 0 0.04. And we'll see how that works on the Ender 3 V2. So uh, when we come up here and we save the project, then we open the folder. Uh, what we'll get is an OBJ file, and we get a text file. Let's open that up, and in the text file it tells you to print at 100% infill. Uh, at a layer height of 0 0.04 millimeters with the base layer of 0 0.16 millimeters. Okay, uh, so this gives me my handy list of all the filaments that I need to grab and stack up next to the printer. <laughs> and then for your uh, slicer, which I'll be using Cura, uh, you'll need to do layer swaps and it'll tell you here do a layer swap at layer 2 and switch to my tree brown and then another swap at layer 6 and swap to my red and then layer 10 swap to orange etc so let's load that up into Cura okay we got Cura opened up here and I'll just drop my STL file in Okay, that is really big. <laughs> so I'm going to go back into here. Okay, and I'm going to adjust my size here. That is really huge. So this is 200 millimeters by 200 millimeters. I'm going to make it, I, don't know, I want to make it a little bit smaller so it won't take forever to print. We'll say 50 by 50. Okay, I can zoom this in. So that's going to have slightly less quality because it's you know, smaller. But it still looks okay. Alright, so let's save the project again. File, file, save project. And then if I come back to Cura, it should tell me the object has been updated. No? Okay, so I'll just... Ah, so it's not going to tell me because the, it's a different file size, so it'll give you a, a new file. So that'll be this one. And I'm going to delete the old one. And then I'll drag this one in. That's better. This is going to be very small. <laughs> this is going to be very small. <laughs> and if you did want to resize this uh, after the fact in Cure here, you could come up here to scale and just make sure you turn off uniform scaling and then you only want to scale it on the X and Y, not the Z and that'll work too. Okay, so here's our model ready to be printed and but we need to add those layer swaps. So I'm gonna come up here to extensions and we'll come down to post-processing and modify g-code. Okay, and then in here we can add a script and I'm going to use pause at height and you have it set to layer number and I have found that with the Ender 3 V2 it works best to change this from Marlin to this BQ M25 setting. So let's get my text file open and so I can see my first layer swap is going to be at layer 2. So 
put two in there and then repeat this at a script and pause at height and we'll just repeat this for all of the different ones layer six that's 66 one six and pause at height and 10 pause at height Eleven and pause at height and switch that and then this will be uh, twelve and then last one uh, pause at height switch it to BQ and this will be sixteen. Okay. And so that is done. And then if you never need to go back into there, you can just click this little box down here and and it'll let you go back in and make any changes. So I do like to click through them and make sure that I set them all to BQ. I found if you leave it set to Marlin, oh, like here, uh, it'll pause, but only for a few seconds, and that's barely enough time to swap the filaments. If you switch it to BQ, it'll pause and stay paused until you go in manually tell it to continue. Okay, that's all of them at BQ. All right, now close. And it looks like it already automatically sliced for me, but we can preview. And see now I don't want this skirt on here. So I'm going to remove the skirt. Or I should say brim. Uh, I'm going to set it to none. And I'll slice it again. That's better. And I'm going to make sure that my layer height is correct. It'll be 0 0.04. It'll take a little longer to slice. Okay, and you can see it looks like a mess. But as we scroll down through the layers, you can see everything disappearing. Yeah. And we'll see how it's going to come out. Surprisingly, this is only 57 minutes. Uh, for larger ones, this can take like five hours or something, like a long time, even though it's very thin. So uh, let's save this to the disk, and I will get uh, printing with it. Okay, I got this all printed, and it looks amazing. I had a little bit of trouble with some of the white stringing around. You can sort of see a string going across the bottom there. But yeah, it came out really, really looking good. That is great. And look at how freaking thin it is. It's less than a millimeter thick. So, yep. Yeah. So that is my finished Scarlet Witch. Okay, so I will have links to where you can get Hue Forge down below. Uh, right now it is uh, $18 for the personal license. And if you have any questions, push them below in the comments and I will try to answer them as best as I can. And please uh, subscribe, leave a like, and I'll see you next time.